Good day to you, wonderful, lovely people out there. How are you this very day? It is getting crazy out there. Thank you for coming to this channel and listening to me blah, blah, blah about all of these massive things that you need to know about what's going on in our culture, what's going on in our economy, what is going on in general, and also spiritually. Thank you for coming here and supporting this channel and giving good words of encouragement and just being all around great saints. And thank you for sharing this video with everyone you know, because we're at the time of the end, folks. This is, there's no going back. In my humble opinion right now, there is no going back. We are full charge heading on for the kingdom of God to come very soon. So hang on to your hats. Let's get into the stories. I have a doozy of a freaking article here. I just can't even believe he said it. But we are in the end of days, just like I said. And I truly believe that they are starting to point to the Antichrist. It's happening. So Prince Charles calls for a vast military style campaign to radically transform global economy. Listen to the words that he spoke at this conference. So when I listened to him, and I had to listen to this over and over and over again because I could swear that he said his and not it. So Prince Charles told everyone listening, we need a vast military style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector with trillions at his disposal. I could have swore he said his. All of the op eds that I am reading, all of the news sources are saying that he said it's, but I could swear that he said his disposal. So you guys take a listen to the sound bite yourself. I'll put it up there in the links in the description box below so you can figure this out one for yourself. So the thing that really gets me is which word did he actually use? Because I listened to it probably, you know, 30 times over and over again. And he's basically saying that for the vision to work, it cannot be up to countries to create parallel solutions, but rather it is necessary to look towards a global systems level solution in order to lead the radical transformation of our current fossil fuel based economy to one that is genuinely renewable and sustainable. Okay, all words aside. While he's literally calling on the world and every human being to change their behavior, their standards aren't so royally met, shall I pun in a few words here, because um, all of these people are the one of the biggest carbon producers on the planet compared to like me where I just drive and go to work and maybe hit the store on the way back home and then that's it you know I'm at home doing my thing and I'm not spending extra money on gas and all this other stuff but these guys are just jet setting all over just making the biggest carbon footprint you could ever see and they're all sitting here touting how we're all just poor people who need to, you know, change our behavior because we're destroying the only planet, quote unquote, the earth is flat, by the way, uh, to basically destroy this place that we live on, which is totally maniacal. So all in all, what I got out of this entire talk was that basically they're calling for a military a privately funded military that is going to take over all the nations of the earth. And they're basically just going to not even rely on those governments that are already in existence. They will be preemptive above them. They will be preeminent above them so that these global police, these global cops, they are going to literally have mass power and mass wealth to take over 
every single human being on the face of the earth. How scary is this, folks? This is craziness straight out of the book of Revelations. Can I just say that? How they're going to be creating this wealth, we are just seeing the very beginning of the draining of your entire wealth and well-being on this earth as the G20 leaders endorse their 15% global minimum tax. So Janet Yellen on Saturday praised Biden and the other heads of state at the G20 conference in Rome for formally adopting a 15% global corporate minimum tax rate that is estimated to bring in $150 billion globally every year. It's not a globe, it's a plane. You know, there's a lot of um, talk about uh, Charles being the Antichrist himself. And I have to disagree with this for a few simple reasons. One is that that person is not going to be revealed until the seven year tribulation rolls out and he's going to be the one penning the covenant with the seven year tribulation himself. So you're going to know that that's the guy right there. And so the other thing is, is I believe that this Antichrist is going to be a transgender person who is a man living in a woman's body. Or in other words, you can say that this was a biological man that dresses up as a woman and pretends to be a woman in life. And so that's why that man described in the book of Daniel won't like women because that person is trying to be a woman himself. And so this is where we get really interesting when you start thinking about Bible prophecy, and especially in da Jan Daniel chapter 9. So in general, what I got out of this article and his speech was that he's basically going to create a military. That's what he is calling for. Create a worldwide um, military that supersedes all national sovereign boundaries, which is maniacal. That is so maniacal. I have a mind of who this person could actually be, but I will not uh, put it forth here because it's still just speculation. We will never know until that moment arrives where that person will make, he will make a covenant with Israel, which starts the seven year tribulation. And that day is coming very fast, folks. So at this point, we are talking about Daniel chapter seven, specifically seven and eight on the verses. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. I considered the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. This is also talked about in Revelation 13. The fourth beast that Daniel saw was terrible and exceedingly strong, and it had 10 horns. So it is not outside of the realm of possibility to believe that by Prince Charles saying that this great army of military prowess that's going to be backed up with this carbon taxation across the earth in every nation, that this army is going to supersede all the sovereign governments of the world. That includes China and Russia. Well, China and Russia didn't go to this COP26, uh, and so they totally shunned it because they don't believe in this garbage. Thank God for some small favors. But... Might I suggest that because uh, the sovereign countries and the people who reign in them, whether they're dictators or presidents or whatever, 
they are actually going to be superseded by this 10 kings that are going to be set up. Will we actually be seeing this out of the COP26? I have a feeling we might be headed in that direction because I swore I could not believe it when he said it. I had to listen to it over and over and over again that he said his. Basically that we need a vast military style campaign to marshal the strength of the private sector with trillions at his disposal. I'm, I'm sure I heard it correctly. <laughs> Tell me what you guys think in the description box below. Anyway, moving on with more biblical prophecy taking shape. Over the weekend, a US flew, the U.S. flew a B-1B strategic long-range bomber over the Middle East and specifically over the Strait of Hormuz near Iran. And what the U.S. Air Force called a presence patrol to send a message to Tehran, the Air Force revealed details and photos of the provocative flyover on Sunday. Importantly, a various points along the route which went from the island of Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean to Yemen and then through Israel and Jordan and then over the Persian Gulf, U.S. Allied fighter jets escorted the bomber, most notably aircraft from Israel and Saudi Arabia. So tons of things happening with Israel. Uh, they're said to have struck near Damascus in a rare daytime raid, which hit a whole bunch of Hezbollah arms. The Israeli military bombed a number of locations surrounding Damascus in this rare daytime strike on Saturday, according to Syrian media, reportedly targeting advanced weapons heading to Hezbollah terror group and other Iranian proxies. Also, the IDF is preparing for war. They're, they conducted a drill. The Israeli Home Front Command and National Emergency Authority is holding a week-long drill that started on Sunday, simulating a large-scale war in which civilians are evacuated from the northern border communities and security agencies will deal with massive rocket barrages sent by Hezbollah. The drill is taking lessons that have been learned from the past events in the north. And what does God always tell us? He tells us all of Israel's enemies come from the north when they're coming in a horde or an army, as well as those from May fighting between Israel and terror groups in the Gaza Strip, the Operation Guardian of the Walls, and from the Second Lebanon War in 2006. Also, massive Israeli drills launched to stimulate war, major war offensive by Iran and proxies. They have launched this full-scale war drill on Sunday, October 31st to prepare for a pro-Iranian precision rocket blitz from Lebanon targeting civilians and infrastructure. The drill ends on Thursday covering a multiple of threats requiring evacuations of the complete frontline communities, dispersing local Arab disturbances in mixed cities, cyber war, and disruptions of basic amenities, and even chemical warfare, which Ezekiel 38 and 39 tells us that when they clean up the dead bodies from this war, World War III, the war from Gog, from the land of Magog, that they actually have to wear special suits in order to clean up the dead in these areas. With all the talks of wars, we always knew that Yeshua told us there would be wars and rumors of wars in the end of days, and that is exactly what's taking place. And guess what? Winter is coming. Do you know what this means? It's nearly time once again for the cabals, ruling classes, to whip the new normal masses into a state of mindless mass hysteria over the imaginary apocalyptic V-I-R-U-S. And same imagery, apocalyptic CV-19 for the last two years. They've got their work cut out for them this time. How much more mass hysterical 
could the new normals possibly get at this point? This time, it's about the NVA seed. This is going to be the new great new normal purge, and it is on. The NVA seed and other infidels and heretics are being hunted down by fanatical hate drunken mobs dragged before the new normal inquisition and made examples of all over the world. The new normal in Germany was a footballer, a popular footballer. I guess his name is Joshua Kimmich or Kimmich and is being publicly drawn and quartered for refusing to submit to being VAC'd and professes his faith in the new normal world order. In the U.S., the unVAC'd stand accused of murdering Colin Powell and also they're planning in Australia to imprison people and fine them $90,000 for the crime of not wearing a medical looking mask and attempt worship at a synagogue or whatever. And in Florida, of all places, frantic school staff have tied a medical looking mask to the face of a non-verbal down syndrome girl with a nylon cord day after day for over six weeks until her father discovered what they were doing it could not go on but uh, the internet is brimming with many sadistic examples of this mass hysterical new norm so let's get this straight most of the new normals, they're not fanatical totalitarians. They are just people looking out for themselves. Quite frankly, I'm concerned with me is how they think. People who will go along with almost anything to avoid being ostracized and punished. Most of them have reached this limit where they can't stand the duration of relentless stress and cognitive dissonance. They have not been educated to build themselves up to resist all of this wickedness. At this point in the entire exercise, and that's what we should be calling it because this is a conditioning to accept the Great Reset for when it comes, then everybody will be either inoculated into it or they will be just uh, dead fodder on the side of it because that's where this is heading folks this is radically irrevocably transforming society to a monolithic corporate campus where everyone has to scan their ids at every turn in an endless maze of perpetually monitored equal friendly gender fluid ideologically uniform non-smoking totally meat safe safe places owned and operated by globo cap and one of its agents or subsidiaries. And this is just getting to the point where people are finally coming into the truth itself. And a lot of people are waking up right now. So it's really important that you share videos like this so that we can get this news out. Even if you share the links in the description box below, it helps spread the word and engage gauge and education of people not with misinformation this is the truth this is what is going on on the ground this winter is probably going to get hugely nutty um there's probably going to be rolling kinds of blackouts all across uh, the lower 48 so there is this discussion and this idea that the polar vortex isn't contained anymore into a circular type of progression as it continues to rotate in the north. So what they said is that something has offset it to where it actually has disrupted and now it, it throws down big waves of just ice cold polar vortexes into the lower 48 and they believe that this is going to worsen this year more than we have seen in the last few years right now we're going to see um, 26,000 people in new york city uh, just uh, mainstream workers for their boroughs or their city officials um, have all just basically been told 
kiss it goodbye. Your job is no longer available to you anymore. And so we've seen 26 fire stations closed because they won't get the poke in the shoulder anymore. And so they can't come to work. And so the idea is that garbage workers, you know, garbage is going to start building up big time in the streets. Do you want to know the number one thing that spreads pestilence more than anything else in the world is an uncleanly neighborhood? (laughs) Okay, wait till the STHF hits the fan, folks, because they are gearing up for this big time. They're People are not going to be doing their jobs anymore. Their things are not going to be getting done. Bills are not going to be getting paid. The whole system is fracturing and falling apart quickly. Our health system has been purged with all kinds of doctors and nurses and CNNs, nurses assistants, medical aides, They are being purged of all of these people who they believe are the far right and they believe that they're part of the problem of this pandemic. And folks, this is not just happening here. Uh, We are facing a growing working class revolt. Millions of peoples in countries all over the earth are protesting in the streets, organizing strikes, walkouts, sickouts, and mounting other forms of opposition. Despite the corporate media's Orwellian attempts to black out any coverage of this or demonize, demonize us, basically just make us out to be the far-right extremists that they they so scared about us. Oh, it drives me nuts. This left and right and all this stuff. It's just take a person for who they are. New normals are very aware that this is happening and the official narrative is finally starting to fall apart. So what happens next this winter? Folks, we could be facing full-blown despotism here, which cannot deploy without destroying itself. Um, What they will be hoping for is that we finally break down, bend the knee, and beg for mercy. I don't know what exactly these... Satanists have in mind, but I am definitely not looking forward to this winter, folks. I'm already pretty darn worn out as it is, and from what I gather, so are a lot of you, but that's what Jesus told us in the end of days. And speaking through Daniel again in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, And he shall speak words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and he shall think to change seasons and the law. And the saints will be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. But then the court convenes in heaven and his dominion will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Folks, God has a plan. Don't ever think that he does not have your best intentions and your soul in his mind continually, folks. He loves each and every one of us so very much. I wish people could get this through their minds who are so fear-stricken and um, distraught. We need to have more faith in our God than we could ever possibly have in ourselves because God loves us. This is a love that far surpasses aeons. He will continually love us forever and ever. This is a beautiful thing. If you can begin to comprehend how much he takes care of us, why he does the things he does in our lives, and that we can be faithful in serving him at all times, you know, then that's when we start to get to walk with God and have a relationship with our Lord because he wants a personal intimate relationship with each one of us right now. And at this point, I will declare that I'm going to have my faith and I'm not going to surrender. I'm not going to withstand this coming siege and I will make it to April. And along with me are other people who are stepping up as the attorney generals in 10 states join the fight against the Biden regime's VAC mandate. 
So on 29th, October 29th, a lawsuit was filed by the Attorneys General of Alaska. Woohoo! Arkansas, Missouri, Nebraska, Iowa, Montana, New Hampshire, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wyoming. They described in a PDF at zerohedge.com in the description box below that the Biden regime's VAC mandate for contractors is a power grab. So the Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt said in a statement as the lawsuit was filed, quote unquote, if the federal government attempts to unconstitutionally exert its will and force federal contractors to mandate VACs, the workforce and businesses could be decimated, further exacerbating the supply chain and workforce crises. Schmidt, a Republican, further argued that the federal government should not be mandating VACs, and that's why we filed the suit today, saying the move is illegal and unconstitutional. So according to this article, the attorney generals are seeking an injunction against the VAC mandates. This lawsuit, the lawsuits following legal challenges of the contractor VAC mandate that have come from other states, which include Florida, Texas, Georgia, Arizona, and others. So in China, which is very interesting, this shows you how communist work, communism works um, in perfect lock and step, which is located in Pudong, Shanghai, China. I hope I got that right. Shanghai's Disneyland sparked chaos as 33,000 visitors were locked down in the park. They were forced to undergo the CV-19er testing. On Sunday, the Disneyland in Shanghai went into partial lockdown after a woman who visited the park tested positive for CV-19er hours before the night of Halloween. The park temporarily suspended entry of any new guests and requested tens of thousands within the facility to undergo testing before they left the park. The government and Disneyland staff sealed the entire venue. A few rides were open to entertain these crazed people, but it was utterly bizarre that hundreds of people in full medical hazmat suits were dispatched to the park after one person tested positive for the virus, and then everyone inside, approximately 33,000 people, had to take the nucleic acid CV-19er test before they were allowed to leave the park. Ain't that crazy? Speaking of the draconian world coming to its dragon counterpart in the Antichrist and Satan, Australia is now confiscating bank accounts, property, licenses, and businesses for non-compliance with the CV-19er fines. Of all the extreme measures carried out by various states in Australia, the collection and confiscation by the state penalty and enforcement register might just be icing on the cake. During the lengthy CV lockdowns in Queensland, the Brisbane area of Australia, most workers were not permitted to work or earn a living. Several states stepped in to provide wage subsidies so people could purchase essential products and pay their living expenses. However, during the lockdown, if you were caught violating any of the lockdown rules, you were subject to a civilian citation or a fine or a ticket for your CV-19er violations. Get caught too far from home outside your permitted bubble and you get a ticket. Get caught spending more than one hour permitted hour outside, you get a ticket. You get caught without a mask, even by yourself, and yep, a ticket. Enter a closed quarantine zone, park, venue, or avenue, and you get a ticket. 
Tickets were being handed out by police on the street as well as during random checkpoints. Additionally, people returning to Queensland were put into systems of involuntary quarantine. The cost for that quarantine, mostly hotel rooms, were being paid by the people being involuntary captive and not allowed to go back to their homes. Citizens were required to have their physical location scanned via a QR code on their phone. If you checked in at the grocery store and they knew how far you were from your home and the police could figure it out that you violated one hour of time outside of your home, got a ticket. Thousands of people were given thousands of fines that will eventually need to be paid. Now the state is requiring all of these civil citations to be paid or else. The enforcement actions to collect these fines from the state penalty and enforcement register are quite extreme. Citizens who have outstanding tickets are finding their driver's licenses suspended. Bank accounts are being frozen and seized. Homes and properties are being confiscated, as well as business licenses suspended for outstanding citations. Queenslanders who received fines for breaking the CV-19er rules risk having their home seized, bank accounts frozen, and the crackdown to collect $5.2 million in repayments has begun. And wrapping up with the last few articles, the Internet of Bodies using CRISPR to electrically connect and control the genome. This is very important to transhumanists, um, just like the Internet of Things. It refers to access and control of human beings, the body itself, via the Internet. Here we, um, in this article at technocracy.news, uh, detail how CRISPR is being used to electronically connect with the genome and as proof of concept display control over transcriptional information networks inside E. coli and salmonella. This technology has played a transformative role in our lives to impact human health, quote unquote, um, and in this scenario, the development of the autonomous health sensing and actuating systems is also being referred to as a closed loop system that senses and acts towards biological conditions. So the successful adoption of the electronic closed loop human health systems is independent on the development of the new methods for biological actuation which has so far been limited to old century neural simulation and optogenetics. So recent advances in the field of biological actuation stems from synthetic biology where our group and others have reported gene circuits that respond to electrical signals with expression of specific genes of interest. In prior publications, their group had detailed a redox-based bacterial protomer, promoter, SOXS, that responds to specific electrochemical signals that can be generated via an external electrode. Using this promoter, specific transgenes of interest can be expressed in bacteria and in response to programmed electrical stimuli. In that work, they have taken this next logical leap for this technology, and they're using electrical signals to connect and control the transcriptional networks in the genome of the cells themselves. To aid in their pursuit, they exploit CRISPR technology that provides the mean to target any specific target in the genome. Specifically, they used a DCAS9-based transcriptional activator to electrically activate and repress selected genes of interest. Doesn't this like come back to you and say, oh, well, maybe they can just start turning on and off the genes that they don't want, and maybe CV19er actually is the catalyst for this, and now they can just decide when everybody 
gets ill and dies and or they can just decide to give you a heart attack at the flip of a switch oh your esg score isn't that great oh well you're such a blight on society we're just click yeah you're gone and so this is getting to that point where this is coming folks <laughs> they are literally trying to control all genetic and natural systems in the world actively right now. Just think about it. This is this article at technocracy.news is similar to how DNA-based VACs are being electrocorporated into the human body to fight CV19er. We may expect the Electrogenetic promoter circuits will be inserted into human cells to open a new modality of bioelectronic signaling. The ultimate hacking of the human body will be electrogenetics, where human DNA can be selectively switched on and off by electrical signals. Folks, 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 wake up. This is the world we're coming into. They are pushing this on us big time. And just think about it with Facebook um, basically switching their name so that they can stop getting a bunch of, you know, fire headed their way with the metaverse at your fingertips. You can literally own nothing and be happy in your fantasy world. See, that's going into the Ten Commandments, folks, and where you just broke commandment number one, you just broke commandment number two, and you for sure is everything broke commandment number three perhaps enhanced with a little magic mushroom hallucinogenic for extra thrills and connections will your reality be where you exist in the physical universe or the metaverse this is coming just like the movie ready player one you will be creating your own identity on and basically real and virtual reality not reality anymore they're definitely looking for this the technocrats want you to be a part of this and if not they're just going to kill you because you're a part of the problem now and last but not least they just launched it china has weapon that can leave the u.s deaf dumb and blind in an attack and it's now in space quote unquote China continues to race ahead of the United States in sea, air, and now in the upper atmosphere. China launched a new satellite on Sunday that can be deployed as a weapon capable of crippling American satellites, according to the Washington Times. General James Dickinson, commander of the U.S. Space Command, warned Congress in April that the Shijian 21 satellite, in part of an effort by China to seek superiority in space, According to the Times, the satellite was sent into space atop a rocket from the Satellite Launch Center in southwest China. And the task of cleaning space debris, or at least that was their claim. However, the Times said the satellite is capable of maneuvering close to orbiting satellites and grabbing or crushing the spacecraft. If weaponized, such a machine could be potential capable of destroying communications and surveillance capabilities of American satellites, leaving the nation military deaf, dumb, and blind in the case of an attack. So in August, China tested a nuclear-capable hypersonic missile. Over four dozen Chinese military aircraft flew into Taiwan's air defense zone recently. That was around October 4th. As another round of provocation, it doesn't end here. China also has the world's largest navy. In fact, the largest military on the earth at this time. So the Biden regime is obsessed over the alleged enemy within our country. Never mind that we have great enemies surrounding us right now. So let's just put this hypersonic missile in our pocket and walk around as the EMP comes and the lights are out everywhere. And maybe it is the darkest winter any country has ever faced. So let's go back to the forced, fourth beast's kingdom 
It is an earthly kingdom that will encompass the whole earth and cause great destruction. It's a coming kingdom on earth that will take over the entire nations of the world. It is coming world government is Satan's basically bringing everything together so that we can all meet Christ at that point in time (laughs) for good or for evil. The 10 horns are 10 kings or leaders that will have power in this kingdom, but they will appear before the 11th king, the Antichrist, appears. Let's go back to John the Revelator, who saw about this in Revelation 17, verses 12 through 13. And the 10 horns which thou sawest are 10 kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. The ten horns are future ten kings that will hold power in the days of the fourth beast, which is in the days of Antichrist, Revelation chapter 13. And during the last world government, ten kings will have one mind, meaning they will think alike. There will be a convergence of thinking on their part. Transhumanism, anyone? They will give or surrender their authority and militaries to the Antichrist and support him. Okay? This is what I'm talking about with Prince Charles. They will give or surrender their authority and militaries to the Antichrist and support him. So what did Prince Charles actually say right there? I'm going to leave that up to you guys. I thought I heard what I heard. Revelation 17 and 17, For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. The ten kings' convergence of thinking will be God's doing because God's word must be fulfilled. God will cause those in power to think alike and surrender their power and authority to the Antichrist. Every jot and tittle of the Bible prophecy will be fulfilled. Let's go back to the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. I am definitely of the education and research that the bride of Christ and her bridesmaids, which is quite frankly pointed out in scripture, specifically Matthew 25, Psalms 45, uh, you get the picture. This group of people are going to be taken out of the earth because they are going to go into the marriage of the Lamb. Not the marriage supper. This is something different. You have to have a marriage first, then the supper comes afterwards. And which is really weird. In Hebraic uh, wedding traditions, weddings um, are always held for seven days. The whole celebratory part of the wedding happens for seven days and we can definitely acquire that from seven days may equal seven years and just saying folks so recall that on january 25th through 29 of this year 2021 the un world economic forum brought together a group of leaders um mega giants in davos switzerland And they discussed ways to change or reset the government systems, economies, and societies all over the earth, including the United States. They submitted recommendations to the Great Reset. Um, That meeting was held in May of 2021. Among other other things, they want to replace U.S. leadership with leaders with a handful of nations. Um, This handful of nations is going to turn out to be 10 leaders. You mark my words on that, folks. It's going to happen. Biden, the time to change America president, said he will do more than approve the Great Reset. He will try to make it happen. 
This concerning the convergence of thinking the stage was set for leaders of one mind on September 25th, 2015, by a unanimous vote of 193 nations to approve the transforming of our Earth, the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Every government is now required to support the 17 un sustainable development goals it's the un sustainable uh, anyway so every government agrees on certain things like abortion gay issues mandated vaccines climate change immigration guess what china and russia are not joining in right now so comes world war three and bringing gog from the land of magog into the Ten Kings realms. It's going to happen. His convergence of thinking is also Yahweh's doing. And it shows that God is setting the stage for the appearance of ten like-minded kings. God is causing the leaders all over the world to think alike because he intends to transfer global leadership to ten people that will agree to surrender their power and authority to the Antichrist. So here's another example of what is going on. September 13th, 2021, it is reported that UN Secretary General Guterres released a document titled Our Common Agenda. Notice this, the Bible says God will cause the Ten Kings to have one mind, and now the UN has a common agenda. This is not a coincidence, folks. There are no such thing as coincidences. God orders all of his creation. And he reveals it to his saints before it happens. So when it happens, you will believe. Our common agenda is called the new agenda for peace. The tribulation period will begin with a covenant for the peace in the Middle East. Our common agenda calls for a new UN-led world order. The new world order will be UN-led world government. Our common agenda calls for the new financial system, a one world digital currency that allows the tracking and buying and selling of every single human being in the system. Our common agenda calls for global VACs, a mandate to force every nation on earth to obey the world government. Our common agenda calls for the strengthening global government in our troubled climate change suffering world our common agenda calls for a new more relevant un and his words multilateralism with teeth he wants leaders from several nations to be given power to force this globalism idea on the whole entire world under the false teaching that the world is suffering from climate change our common agenda calls for world leaders to hold a global summit of futures in 2023, a little more than a year from now, to study ways to strengthen global governance and make sure global policies are being enforced. That's why they need this global military unit that is being paid for by a global tax. And folks, it's all a lie. Every single part of this is a lie. For one, God made a plane. He made a plane and he thrust, he pushed the firmament up on the four pillars of the earth. It's not a globe. Let's just get over that lie right now. Then you can start seeing the truth. So this is the tearing down of other nations' constitutions, our constitution. They want global citizenry. They don't want national citizens. Those who have heard about the Antichrist might not accept this one person's rule, but they will be caught off guard and accept a 10 man's rule, not knowing that the Bible prophecy says 10 will surrender their authority and militaries to one man. We are seeing the opposite of the Tower of Babel, where God confounded the people's language and speech to hold back Nimrod's one world government and religion back then where he was building the Tower of Babel to destroy the firmament so he could get to God. Too stupid to understand that there's like a whole bunch of water up there and he would have probably drowned the whole earth again. Just saying. 
God is now converging the thinking of leaders to bring in this one world government and religion. There are skeptics that do not believe that we are this close to the end of this age. But God is causing world leaders right now to think alike and to fulfill his world. He cannot be stopped. Yahweh is using the restrainer, the Holy Spirit, to hold it back until his appointed time. But he will remove the restrainer with the rapture. And these liars and globalists will control everything. The one world government will, and the religion will resurge forward. The Antichrist is going to come out of the EU. And you know what? This is all going to happen. But are you ready to go to heaven? Are you ready to have an eternal relationship with Yeshua HaMashiach. I want to read to you a little bit from Randy Nettles, The Coming of the Son of Man, Part 1. Uh, the Olive Discourse or the Prophecy is the last of the five discourses of Matthew and is also found in the other two synoptic Gospels of Mark, chapter 13 and Luke, chapter 21 and 17. The timing of this discourse between Yeshua and some of his disciples occurred just before the Passion of the Christ's beginning. Before we examine the contents of that prophecy from Yeshua, let's examine what happened immediately beforehand, the Olivet Discourse. A few days before the Passover and Jesus' death, the disciples were commenting on the beauty of the temple. Yeshua reminded them of their earlier conversation and said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Matthew 24, verse 2. Yeshua was sitting on the Mount of Olives when this conversation developed. So Peter, James, John, and Andrew, according to Mark 13 and 3, naturally wanted to know the details of this great revelation from Yeshua. The discussion that ensued is known as the Olivet Discourse. The disciples asked him three questions pertaining to this future event and the end times, including his coming to set up his kingdom, which he had been teaching them about with frequency during the last three days or few days. The three questions that were ordered was, when will these things be? The destruction of the temple. What will be the signs of your coming? The disciples had been made aware of Yeshua's prophecies concerning his death and resurrection. So they were asking him when he would return after his death to set up his kingdom. And number three, what will be the sign of the end of the age? And the disciples were true Jews as they proved the point Yeshua made in John 4 and 48, where he said, Unless you people, Jews, see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Yeshua, however, did not answer the first question in the accounts of Matthew and Mark, but he did in Luke 21, verses 20 through 24. Although he did not mention a specific time or date, in hindsight, we know it occurred 36 years later. Ironically or not, about the age of Yeshua upon his death, in AD 70, Jesus answered the disciples' question out of order. He answered the third question first, what shall be the sign of the end of this world? So there are six signs um, that Jesus gave to the end of this age or this world before the kingdom of God will be established. These signs are slightly different in all three gospel accounts, so they're kind of consolidated on his site. Uh, false messiahs, there will be false messiahs. Matthew 24, verses 4 through 5. Mark 13, 5 through 6. Luke 21 through 8. Wars and rumors of wars and nations rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom. All through, also Matthew verses 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21 again. Famines, same thing, all found. Matthew 24, Mark 13 and Luke 21, pestilences, earthquakes in various places, fearful signs and events, and great signs from heaven. Matthew and Mark 
describe these signs as birth pains in some translations, for they will get stronger and more frequent as time progresses. Birth pains culminate during the last seven years on earth before Yeshua's second coming, known as Daniel's 70th week or the tribulation, and are recorded in the book of Revelation by John the Apostle. Matthew and Mark describe these signs and compares them to the days of Noah, so which is coming, uh, this rapture, just like Noah and his family, you know, they didn't close the door to the ark. God himself closed the door to the ark. So he kept them safe. This is going to happen to his bride and her entourage. I truly believe in these end of days. But I want to veer off a little bit here, and I want the listeners to understand who we're going to go live with for all eternity. Most people don't talk about this part. Um, they like to talk about the excitement of the rapture. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm like waiting for this moment. I'm praying I'm in it. So our Savior, our King, our God, our Messiah, He is the bread of life. John 6, 34 through 40. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the him who sent me. Verse 38 reads, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. It is the Father's will that Messiah will accomplish. There is not another will that will be accomplished. Even though Yeshua said he will not do his own will, the will of Yeshua and God, the Father, are one. If Yeshua spoke to the flesh and it was healed and spoke to the dead and they came back to life, then what about when he speaks to more important matters such as building of the kingdom of heaven? We ask, what significance does this have? It seems it would be of a higher significance. Other things of high significance are the restoration of Israel the opening of the gospel to the nations, which is the will of the Father and the Son who will accomplish it. Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 18 says that God will raise up a prophet like Moses for the people. They were afraid of the Lord's voice in Horeb when it was like thunder when God spoke. But let's look at verse 18, which says, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he will speak to them all that I command him. God will put his words in Messiah's mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. The prophet is Yeshua. He spoke what God told him to speak. God himself foretold this. The Lord said that Yeshua will speak all that I command. There is perfect fulfillment here because they are one. So Yeshua says in John chapter 6 verse 38, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This direct statement from Messiah never changes. And that is why we are explaining that there is something else Messiah is talking about in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I am reading for from Yeshua by Cory Lactimus. The oneness that Yesiah, Messiah and Yahweh the Father have is something that we're supposed to pray every day to understand. It is called Shema in Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God the Lord is one. It is not enough to just listen that he is one, but to understand and think on it daily. The verb here is in the imperative, which is a command form, and you want to think of this oneness of Yahweh. Listening and knowing what is read is different than understanding what is read. 
That is, what does it mean to hear that God is one? It means to think in an awesome and perfect oneness all the time. The scripture is not asking you to do this. It is commanding you to do this. Isaiah chapter 43 and 11 says, I, even I am the Lord and besides me, there is no savior. I thought Yeshua was the savior. He is. And Yeshua's prayer in John 17 and 21, as he is praying for others, he says that they may all, that they all may be one as you father are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. There is only one God. We are to think in that continually. John 14, 9 through 10 reads, Yeshua said to him, Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. What we are saying here is when Messiah is speaking, it was not out of a selfish nature. Not once. You cannot view Christ through your eyes. That is how you would be feeling. One may say... But his, he was human like me. He had the same kind of nature I did. He was human, but he was also God. So think for a moment what he went through. In his teaching us that he is the fulfillment of scripture, is that not awesome? And of course, there are people not knowing because they are only listening to the words that he is saying just, you know, just out of mouth. It's not just to be understood what he is saying, the words that he's speaking. It was also to be thirsty that he said the words, but that we would drink of Yeshua and have his righteousness. When we recall the word of God to our minds, we see that I thirst is fulfilled in Psalm 69 verse 21. And we see the seeking of Redemption, salvation in the psalm is fulfilled. People like David were praying for salvation and it was answered with the Messiah. Yeshua is telling us that this will surely come to pass. There is no lack of faith or lack of love in Yeshua. There is only love. What we are doing with his writing is helping people understand it was not a man that died on the cross. It was God's son. And reverence, respect, love, and adoration should be given at all times to him who was worthy of it. When thinking about the prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, with the realization that the thoughts of Christ are on his creation, Lost and scattered upon his return, his love should amaze you at this point. People think he's thinking of himself at this time in his life. He is thinking of others. They think he is thinking what he must go through. He is thinking what they have to go through. They think he is thinking that he will take on as he is crucified, however, it seems that he is thinking what they may take on, that is, his wrath if they do not accept him as Mashiach, Messiah. We are incredibly loved by our Messiah Yeshua. If after um, this message you feel encouraged about Messiah's determination to bring you in a relationship with him, or you see his love stronger than you have ever seen it before, not just as a human, but very human and very God. What a blessing you have just received. May Mashiach's love amaze you and may you go with his strength for in him is no weakness. Yahweh bless you all. I hope this message has blessed you. Please continually look up. Our redemption is coming very quickly and we want to be found worthy to go in 
to the marriage of the Lamb. We want to be found at his table. We want to be with him forever because he is the ultimate expression of love. And what a joy it will get to that we'll get to have learning about him forever and ever and ever and ever. All right. I love you all so very much. Maranatha. Till next we meet.